Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Well, praise God. My name is Pastor Abe Jeter. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, right on the corner of MLK and Union. Well, praise God, you are invited to our services, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. We are inside. We've been inside since July. But we also uh, are live streaming on Facebook uh, at 11 o'clock. And we also are doing Zoom. And certainly you can join us on any one of those platforms. We also have the FM radio for those of you just parked in our parking lots who may not want to uh, come into church. You know, you can sit in your car and you can hear the entire service. Well, praise our God. Well, anyway, we're studying the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, we're in chapter 3, amen? And uh, last week, we uh, looked at the first uh, nine verses, and, uh, and so we're going to pick up on uh, chapter, um, amen, well, anyway. Uh, we're going to pick up on uh, chapter 3, verses 10 to the end of the chapter. Well, all right. Well, praise our God. Uh, just uh, a quick review. Luke, uh, the historian, uh, can pinpoint in time, space, and history when John the Baptist and our Lord Jesus public ministries began, okay? Amen. And so uh, John certainly, uh, or uh, Luke made it very clear, uh, uh, the year, you know, uh, who was emperor, uh, who, were, who was Tetrarch in uh, these various areas, and uh, who was high priest, and on and on and on. And so made it very clear uh, in verse uh, 1 and 2, uh, just exactly uh, when uh, this event took place. You can catch the uh, previous uh, uh, copy and uh, or message, and uh, you'll be brought up to date. It's on um, YouTube, uh, also on Facebook. Uh, well, praise God. Anyway, um, we looked at John's mission, okay? His mission was to prepare the way of the Lord, okay? He was to bring people to a place of repentance. He was to prepare their hearts for Messiah, okay? Um, in Luke chapter 3, verses 3 through 6, And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance, for the remission of sins. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. <coughs> Excuse me again. Wow. At any point, we uh, talked about these verses, and we talked about uh, their figurative uh, a meaning, you know, and the idea was uh, God wanted to bring people to a place of repentance and, and, and bring their lives to a place where they want to lay it all on the altar to come right uh, with God. Uh, amen. Preparing their hearts uh, for uh, the, uh, the Messiah that they were expecting to show up at any time. Amen. Well, praise God. And, and with this message of repentance, uh, um, 
coming to a place where you're willing to turn away from all known sin and give up the right to run your life independently of God. Well, praise God. So John had a powerful message there, a message of repentance. And these folks were, were willing to uh, 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 make commitments and, and be publicly baptized, you know. That was a pretty powerful thing, you know. Uh, public testimony of uh, repentance and, and making a commitment to the uh, the living God with an expectation that Messiah is coming at any moment. Amen? Well, praise God. These people were ready for a change. Uh, a lot of them, praise God. Not everyone. Amen? And so, well, praise God. And so, uh, last week we ended up here with John the Baptist's message and the impact uh, that his message had on the hearers. And so, so we know what his mission was. It was to turn their hearts. Uh, amen. Prepare their hearts. Prepare them for Messiah. Okay. We looked at his message. Okay. And uh, there was a powerful anointing on John. I mean, he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. So there was a powerful anointing. And you know, uh, it is the anointing that breaks yokes. It is the anointing that attracts. Uh, it is the Holy Ghost conviction, amen, uh, that brings one uh, to a place of true repentance uh, from the heart where he's willing to turn away from uh, all known sin and give up the right to run his life independent of God. That's a, a move of the Holy Ghost. Well, anyway, uh, real Bible repentance will cause you to want to change. It will cause you to want to find out what, uh, from God and from leadership, what is the next step? <laughs> yeah, well, praise our God. So John uh, came with this ministry of, re of the baptism of repentance. Yeah, amen. Powerful ministry. Uh, people were preparing their hearts. Amen. For Messiah. And, and it was a multitude of people. I mean, they flocked to him by the hundreds and even thousands, okay? Well, praise God. It was a move of God, let me tell you, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, so that's where we are here, amen? Uh, John's message and the impact of his message on his hearers, okay? And so we find out in, in verse 10, and the people ask him, saying, what shall we do then? And he answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. And, and uh, well, praise God. Amen. So, so that was just a general message there. Okay. Uh, that was a message to the general people. What shall we do? Well, uh, uh, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you in essence. So he says, I want you to put faith and obedience into practice. Bring it down to a practical level because uh, it's about relationships. It's about how you get along with others. It's about everyday living, marketplace uh, living. Because most people can live right when they come to church on Sunday morning and Wednesday night, but John was bringing it right down where you live. He says, you know, if you got two coats, be willing to impart one of your coats to somebody else. I'm telling you, folks, and that is harder than it seems. Amen? <laughs> I remember I met a guy in, uh, where was I? Canton, maybe? I don't know. But but I had a nice London Fog windbreaker. I love that windbreaker. I really did. I would had it for a number of years. And I met this guy at uh, McDonald's, and he said he was homeless, and he was, and uh, it was cold, and uh, I felt compelled to give him my jacket. Did I want to give him my jacket? No, I did not. I loved that jacket. Did he take care of it? Probably not. <laughs> and uh, I still miss that jacket today, but hey, but I felt compelled to give him that, that, that jacket, you know? And here's the scripture says, you know, if you have two coats, we need to be prepared to give it to someone who needs it. 
you know, and uh, <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And, you know, let him impart to him that hath not, and he that hath meat, let him do likewise. You know, uh, in uh, Matthew 25, when Jesus was separating the, the goat and the sheep, and he was telling to uh, the sheep, you know, enter now into the joy of the Lord, he says. Because when I was hungry, you fed me. Well, they were like, when, when, well, when, when did we do that, Lord? Well, when you did it to the least of these, my brother, when you did it to me. Well, you know, he's, I was in the hospital, you visit me. I was in jail, and you visit me. When, 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 when? And so, practical, everyday living. So John was telling people, he was getting down where they live, okay? Practical, everyday living, you know? Uh, we're naturally selfishly. Selfish. We want to hold on to what we have. And, and now, I, I want to say, the things that John was telling these people, um, they were probably not able to do it in themselves. But, but uh, uh, kingdom, kingdom anticipation was in the atmosphere. They were expecting Messiah to come on the scene. Amen. Uh, and, and when the kingdom came, there would be an empowering. Uh, and John understood it. Amen. And they'll be able to do these things. So John didn't lower the standards. Preachers, we cannot lower the standards. We got to preach the standards. Don't, let, don't ever let the devil put something in your mind. Well, nobody can live that, that, like that. That's a lie. You preach the gospel and you hold up the standards of holiness just like God said it. God is able to empower men and women if they'll repent, come to the place in their lives where they will and give up the right to run their lives independent of God. You know, God will work it out in them. Okay? And so John says, yeah, if you got two coats in part one, okay? You got meat, give it to him that does not have it, okay? And that is contrary to human nature, but God will enable you to do it. And these people were, were responding. They were repenting, uh, uh, coming under conviction, uh, recognizing their sinfulness, selfishness, and they were making a public repentance and being baptized uh, with a view toward Messiah who is coming. Well... Amen. And so John was speaking to people right where they are, okay? He spoke to the needs of the people. He got right down where they were living. Amen. Because John's message was the kingdom of God was at hand. His, his message was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Hmm. It, it was within reach. Yeah, that was an exciting message. And that was a, a worthy message from, for people to say, well, you know, I better get right with God. My goodness, the kingdom of, 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 of God is at hand. Well, and so, amen. And, and we, can't, we can't separate the kingdom uh, from the Holy Ghost because in Matthew 12, 28, amen, uh, they were accusing Jesus of casting out devils by a bells up, uh, <laughs> and anyway, uh, Jesus says, if I cast out demons by the Holy Ghost, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Kingdom, Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God, the Holy Ghost dispensation. Oh, yeah, it's at hand. Well, it's here. And God, he did set up a kingdom in his first advent. Oh, yeah. He says in Romans, amen, amen. Uh, I believe chapter 15, 21. But anyway, he says, for the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, cannot separate the kingdom from the Holy Ghost. So if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God, has come unto you. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Well, thank God for kingdom power. Holy Ghost power. Well, anyway, uh, praise God. Thank God for the empowering, the kingdom empowering of the Holy Ghost. Listen, amen. Uh, verse 12. Then came also publicans to be baptized. 
and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And so we're talking about publicans. We're talking about the tax collectors, okay? And, and, and one of the complaints about the tax collectors, they were greedy, okay? They would deceive people, charging more taxes than they should have been charging. And, you know, a whole back part for themselves, turn what they should turn into Caesar, okay? <laughs> hey, that's why Zacchaeus, he, he was up in that tree, wanted to see Jesus. And Jesus stopped and said, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus come down. And, 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 and at the dinner at Zacchaeus' house, he says, look, if I've, if I've cheated anyone, I'm going to give it back to him more than I, I took. Yeah, and Pharisees are sitting back and says, he's eating with publicans and sinners. <laughs> Jesus come to reach the lost, okay? And the spirit of Christ was on John the Baptist. And he was getting down where the people are living. And so he was telling those publicans when they say, ah, and now being under conviction, what shall we do? Well, he said, exact no more than which is appointed you. Be honest. Don't overcharge people. Amen. Well, praise God. He got right down to where they were. And the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now, getting down where you live. He's going to tell you exactly what you need to do, what you need to lay on the altar, what you need to be honest with God about, what you need to repent of. Okay? Because, you know, you, you, you can go get baptized with water and join the church, even serve. But unless you repent from the heart, come clean with God, amen, you are not saved. And you're not going to heaven. You're going to burn in the fire like he's going to talk about here in a minute. Well, praise our God. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, and what shall we do? He got right down where they live. And he said unto them, do violence to no man. Come on, don't be abusing people. Exercise your strength and your military combat or the fact that they're afraid of you because you're a soldier, okay? All right, do violence to no man, all right? And then he goes on and says, neither accuse any falsely, don't make any false arrest, all right? And that would go to the policeman today, okay? Do violence to no man. Don't make false arrest. Don't abuse your power, okay? And, but the other is true too. You have to exercise the authority that you have. You're going to have to put down uh, insurrection. You're going to have to put down uh, rebellion. You're going to have to put down lawlessness. So I know a policeman, you're in a tough spot, okay? Amen? But God will give you wisdom, okay? Uh, so we're praying for you. All right. All right. And so he tells these uh, 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 soldiers, amen, uh, he says, uh, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and, oh, and he really got down. He really got down where he lived. And be content with your wages. Ow! <laughs> and, of course, that's, that's one of the main complaints of, 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 of soldiers, at least in the past. Uh, lack of contentment with their wages, okay? Well, because, you know, obviously uh, uh, they, they want to pay soldiers as less they, as, as they can, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, praise our God. You know, it's the... Uh, the leaders that would make the most money. Anyway, well, praise God. And it was those soldiers out there risking their lives. Well, anyway, uh, but John would get down right where people live it. And that's what we have to do, men and women of God. We've got to preach the gospel right where people live. We've got to say what we need to say to people. Now, sometimes, you know, uh, people may come into church and, and, and I may have something included in my message and that, that, that speaks to their need. And they think I'm picking on them because I may know something about their past. But I don't preach like that. I don't pick on people. I don't see necessarily people come in and pick on their knees as a rule, okay? Uh, I don't. I'm not saying I can't ever do that. I was invited to preach someplace. And uh, as I went to preach, uh, a certain preacher was assigned to me. And that preacher was smoking. I couldn't believe it. And uh, even off me one. And then he said, uh, everybody have their sins. Well, it didn't go too good with me. I'm a holiness preacher, okay? All right? And so uh, when I preached that morning, I knocked the props out of smoking. Okay, now, I didn't call their names, but I did knock the props out of smoking, okay? <laughs> ah, what can I say? All right, well, praise our God. Well, hey, look, don't get me wrong. When God saved me, I was smoking. And I knew that I needed to give up the boozing, which I did. 
I know I had to quit running down uh, town with the women. I knew that. And so I knew a lot of things that I had to do. But you know, it never dawned on me. I don't know why it should have dawned on me because I was aware uh, that I shouldn't smoke going back in some history of my life. But, but you know, at that moment, it never dawned on me that I should quit smoking. And I love smoking. And so after I was saved uh, for a week or two, uh, God made it very clear to me that I need to stop smoking. I'm like, what? What? Give up smoking? And it was a struggle. It was a real struggle because I didn't want to give it up. It was a struggle. And finally, I would throw away my cigarettes. And then I would bomb a cigarette from somebody. And then I would buy a pack, smoke one or two, fall under, con under conviction, throw it away. I mean, in those days, the comic strip characters was smoking, and I would be tempted. <laughs> Finally, I said, you know, I'm going to give up cigarettes, and I'm going to go to cigars or, or cigarellos uh, I tried for a while. But then there was a sore uh, that developed under my tongue, and I said, oh, my goodness, now I have cancer. I should have stopped smoking when the Lord told me. And so uh, I said, Lord, if you take away that sore, under my tongue, I will not put another cigarette in my mouth. And he took away the sore. I never put another cigarette in my mouth. And that was 50 years ago, say, okay? Praise our God. As soon as I came to a place in my heart where I meant business, there was no problem. But long as I was in compromise and really half-hearted, there was a struggle. And that's the, that's the reason you're struggling with things because you're half-hearted, okay? Amen. All right, well, praise our God. Praise our God. Okay, well, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, uh, the people had high expectations of Messiah appearing at any time. So verse 15 says, and I said, people were at expectation, all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he uh, were the Christ or not, okay? And John answered, verse 16, and saying unto them, oh, I indeed baptize you with water, but one that, that uh, one mightier than I cometh, uh, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, okay? Well, Praise God. And so John was saying, I'm not the Messiah, but he's coming after me and he's mighty than I. Look, I baptized with water. He baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, okay? And we, we like that idea of being baptized with the Holy Ghost and we like the idea of, of, of fire and empowering us. But you know, there's some things that the Holy Ghost want to burn up in our lives. Selfishness and, and some other stuff, okay? We may not like all of that, okay? And so if you're baptized... With the Holy Ghost, there's some fire burning up some stuff as well. Well, praise our God. Anyway, and uh, uh, let's keep on. Time about to go. Listen, listen. And and and, and he says, I'm not I'm not worthy to unloose un, 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 un his shoes. Amen. Anyway, uh, whose fan is in his hand, and he's he's bringing this word picture of a threshing floor. You know. Uh, where they're separating the wheat from the chaff, and the wheat would be uh, those born-again believers. But it's interesting, they got chaff on their life, and there's a shaking uh, 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 time that, that, uh, 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 that shakes that, 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 that chaff uh, loose. And then there's that wind from the fan uh, or the threshing instrument uh, that, that blows that chaff away as separated, okay? And what God wants in his garner uh, is the wheat, and the chaff is, is going to be burned up, okay? And so, uh, yes, uh, uh, God wants to get rid of some things. God is going to require you to lay some things on the altar. Amen. There's some things that's going to need to be burned up. Amen. You can't be filled with the Holy Ghost and continue to walk in some areas in your life. No. Amen. You can't be saved, praise God, and still practice some things. But anyway, and so he's saying that uh, there's going to be some separating going on, okay? Well, now, in another sense... Uh, Jesus was talking to religious folks. All these were supposed to be the people of God, uh, but they all were not the people of God, okay? Because Jesus said, some of you in, in John chapter 8, of your father the devil, okay? And, and Jesus letting you know uh, uh, he's going to preach and teach, and his ministry and message going to cause some separation, okay? 
Yeah, it's going to cause uh, the wheat to be identified. It's going to cause the chaff to be identified, okay? And then the first fire is, as they sit on that ministry, the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to burn them up. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're going to be on, they, they, they're going to see themselves. One preacher says, uh, you come to my place, and one funeral director says, you know, uh, when I'm doing a funeral in your place, you preach, I see myself dangling over hell because the preacher was preaching it clear. Uh, the next preacher come around and he make he feels pretty good about himself. Well, there's something wrong with that picture. Anyway, and so uh, so the first fire is that when that word go forth with power and great might, you see yourself on fire because it exposed your sin. You're not comfortable. Uh, but hey, you know, but if you don't repent, there will come a time that you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Well, uh, yeah. And so some people say, well, all right, the threshing floor in this case is uh, Israel. Okay. And the chaff would be of those who refuse Christ. And, of course, the wheat will be those who receive them. Okay? And the fire is going to be the fire of hell or the fire of the lake of fire, ultimately, for those who reject Jesus Christ. But just moving right on, praise God. And the Bible says, in many other things, he exhorted the people, all right, as he preached. And uh, well, we know he exposed Herod's sin. He preached and exposed the sin of Herod. He had to uh, tell him he was wrong for sleeping with his brother's wife. Uh, he take his brother's wife for his wife and these kind of things. And so uh, Herod was had a religious spirit. He was willing to hear many things from the brother, but he was not willing to truly repent. Oh, he liked good preaching like a lot of you. Amen. But you don't want to do right. Oh, you like good gospel singing, but you don't want to do right. Amen. Uh, you like coming to church. Uh, because you want to say you've been to the church. Oh, I've been baptized, but you don't want to repent and you don't want to live right. And that's where John was, okay? Uh, I mean, that's where Herod was. And, and the Bible says, uh, but Herod the Tetrarch, uh, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, and yet this above all that he shut John up in prison uh, for Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. Okay? Well, that's bad. Anyway, and, and, and for John had said unto Herod, it's not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. And therefore Herod, Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have him, have him, have him kill him. Uh, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just at a man and holy and observed him when he had heard him and he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come that Herod on, uh, had, well, had, well, so that's, uh, I'm reading down out of, out of, out of Mark chapter uh, six. So, so Mark chapter uh, six, 17 to 21 talks about how Herodias uh, uh, had a daughter dance before Herod and he was a man full of lust and uh, he swore some things. Anyway, he had John beheaded. And so uh, he was an evil man. And so at any point, uh, we've got to preach truth. Amen. We've got to tell the truth about the government. We have to tell the truth about our leaders. May God give us the boldness of John the Baptist. May we not uh, uh, shrink in fear. Uh, there's a, a culture of fear being developed in our country right now. And uh, uh, people who value truth are afraid to share what they think with their neighbors because they'll be taken off various platforms, you know, uh, there'll be a call of uh, this kind of phobia and that kind of phobia. But folks, uh, we cannot operate in fear. Anyway, uh, verse 21 and 22 talks about uh, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, uh, the heavens were open and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily form or in bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven and said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Praise God. So if God acknowledged that Jesus was his son, the son of God, and that he was well pleased. And the Holy Ghost was poured out him on him without measure. And so this begins Jesus' public ministry. Amen. And then he goes into this genealogy. He obviously starts with Jesus being the son of God in verse 22. And it ends, amen, in verse 38 with Adam being the son of God. Well, next week, we're going to go into chapter 4. I hope you got something out of this message. May the Lord bless you and keep you.